So, I hope you enjoyed hearing a bunch about WebRender because we can continue on the same thing. Uh, well, not the same thing, but in a different path down the WebRender path. Uh, so, let me present you uh, Atil Dostoki from the University of Seged. Uh, as I mentioned uh, last month, we had the University of Seged uh, folks present uh, about the web Bluetooth research from last year's uh, Mozilla grant, and now they're um, they return to present their newest uh, Mozilla-bound research about web render and servo. So take it away. Uh, so. Hi everyone, my name is Attila and I work at the University of Szeged. Uh, as, uh, we have a team who works with Rust and Servo and uh, this year we are focusing on WebRender and uh, especially with uh, the backend part and uh, our main uh, plan was for this year to replace uh, WebRender's current uh, graphics API, which is uh, OpenGL, and uh, the next big thing is or was Wukan at the time. So we thought that why not change it to Wukan, maybe speed up things, and how cool is it if you support multiple backends? So, first thing first, where we started. So, just the usual clone web render and dig into the source code. We didn't have an awesome talk about WebRender back then, so we have to figure out everything ourselves. So the first thing we did is identify the main uh, tasks and possible blocker things. And uh, so what we found is WebRender using a create called Gleam, which is just a wrapper uh, around uh, OpenGL, so basically it's uh, calling uh, pure OpenGL, and uh, there are no third-party library or anything required. So that was the good part. So there was a um, um, other thing where uh, WebRender uses a lot of shaders, and those shaders are in tiny pieces, and uh, they concatenate everything together in runtime. And for Vulkan, you need a shader type called Spearway, which you can compile from GLSL shaders, but it's required uh, in real time. So we uh, had to move every shader uh, concatenation thing uh, to the compile time. The other uh, question was, what about WebGL? Because it just started to uh, support uh, the virtual reality stuff, so we shouldn't just abandon it. And uh, there was some other proposals like WebGPU or Obsidian, uh, but I will get back to this part later. So uh, another big question was to rewrite everything in Wokan or maybe create a common API so we support both OpenGL and Vulkan with the same API and call the underlying layers. And uh, we were pointed to a pretty interesting uh, create called GFXRS, which is uh, basically a high performance bindless API, which tries to uh, be the one API you need for the graphics engines. And it's in Rust, so it looked very promising. And uh, uh, so this was back in March or April, and uh, it already supported OpenGL, uh, also in, on Android. It has a, I think it was a full DirectX 11 support, and uh, they started to work on the Vulkan and the Metal API. Uh, Metal is for the Apple devices. And uh, so we had a new plan. Why not support all the backends if you can with GFXRS? And uh, we only need one API, and it sounded pretty cool. So 
we, we decided to use this uh, GFXRS, but how? Uh, you know you found a pretty great project if you found more than a simple example file in the repository. So there was a whole blog post about how to use this GFXRS. And uh, the main thing you will certainly encounter is tree structures and a lot of pipelines, depending on your application. So the first one is uh, factory. Basically, you create things with that, allocate resources, create uh, textures, vertex buffers, a lot of things. And uh, encoder, this basically uh, collects commands, uh, like draw this geometry, upload this stuff to the uh, shader variable. And uh, if you finish with the, these commands, uh, you can send it to a thing called device, which is just a representation of the underlying uh, graphics API, like uh, DirectX, OpenGL, Vulkan, and you submit this, uh, these commands uh, to them, and it will send it to the GPU. And uh, the last thing is a pipeline. So basically, it will represent a shader program. You have to map everything. And uh, yeah, so first thing first, we decided to draw a rectangle, of course, with WebRender. And uh, the, there are some things you need to create to achieve this, like uh, find the correct shader, like in our case called PS Rectangle. PS stands for Primitive Shader. And create a vertex buffer, create some other buffers like constant buffer, instance buffer, upload everything to the correct buffer, and of course call flush, because without that you won't see anything. And I just copy pasted some of our code that it's only a few lines, so there is a, a platform-specific code in the beginning because you can get around the window creation. But uh, other than that, you will get a device, a factory, encoder, create a vertex buffer, upload it, create a pipeline, upload it with the correct data, and call flush. And if everything's working, <coughs> you just get a rectangle, or as we thought. So you should see a rectangle. So our expectation was on the left image, and <laughs> what we get is the right one. So basically, we missed some step. But how you debug this? So you can print out everything in Rust, but the main problem was in the shader. And you can uh, put print statement on a shader. So there is a program called RenderDoc, which is a pretty useful program because uh, there is a snapshot. And on the left, you can see every draw call you made in a frame. On the right, you can see the shaders. And uh, you can inspect the in and outs of a shader variable. And uh, you can even highlight things where should be drawn. So I only can recommend it. So we managed to find what we are missing. So WebRender is doing a thing when, where they move everything to one or basically three big textures. These are shared data. And uh, when you uh, send the instances to the shaders, they are basically just addresses where it can fetch its data. And uh, yeah, if you correctly wire up everything, you should see this. So we were very happy about this and think, what next? So basically what we did, we so there is a bunch of shaders in WebRender. I just highlighted some, so we already uh, did the rectangle one, but there is border, image, text, so 
So they are doing everything with the shaders. So what we did, we iteratively implemented all the shaders. It was, yeah. So when you uh, connect the, our web render to the sh uh, servo browser with only a rectangle shader, you will get this. And uh, so we were very happy because we had a download button almost because we were missing the curvy uh, border and edges. But yeah, it was something. We started to add the other things like borders and even more borders. We managed to get every one of them. There is a hidden and a none, so we don't miss anything. And we try to add the text and images. You, you can see it's m most probably a placeholder, not an actual texture or text. So, but we managed to fix it. So after a while, we had text images, and we even support gradients. So that was cool. And after a while, it started to look like an actual web page. But you see, there is something off with the colors. And we, at that time, we didn't support anything uh, clipping related, so not, not a curvy thing. But uh, finally, we managed to get everything right. And this is the exact same, almost the exact same uh, page, what would you get with the original web render? So we thought that, okay, this looks like uh, usable stuff, so why not add another backend? And we choose DirectX over Vulkan because uh, Vulkan was in a in progress state and uh, DirectX one was already implemented in uh, GFXRS. So Basically, you only need to change one thing, one minor thing, the window creation, and uh, everything will work. So server supports the Windows platform, so it was already a good thing. We didn't have to do anything with that. So there is a crate called Glutin in Servo or in WebRender, which is handles the OpenGL window. We just had to replace it with uh, DirectX graphical infrastructure or something like that and a thing called Winit which is a window handling library in which in Rust. So after we did that we totally forgot about that DirectX uses HLSL shaders and not GLSL shaders. I think it stands for high language or high level shading language or something like that. And uh, so it's a different thing. And the next big thing was uh, to convert all of these shaders to HLSA. So we Googled it and turns out there is a thing called Spearway Cross, which can uh, convert Spearway code to another uh, shader language like HLSL, but it was in an experimental uh, state that point. And uh, so we know we can uh, convert everything to Spearway because we checked it with the Vulkan at the beginning. So why not use it? And turns out that GFXRS at that time didn't support it because there was something messed up with the nested structures. So it was a, uh, it looked really interesting, the generated HLSL. There was something messed up with the constant buffers. So sadly, we didn't have this option. So the other way was to convert everything manually. And Fortunately, there is a mapping between HLSL and GLSL, but uh, it's almost one-to-one. -one. So the main thing is that you call a VEC2, uh, a float2, and 
things like that, and you will have to, so there is no in and out, and uh, you will need to create some structures, but it seems pretty straightforward. So what we did basically is just redefine everything. Why not? And so there are very useful macros in GLSL, what you can do. So yeah, after that, we decided to draw a rectangle with DirectX 11, and it worked. So we were pretty happy about it. And how about drawing more rectangles? So yeah, it turns out the transition didn't went so smoothly as we thought. And we went back to RenderDoc and started investigating. It turns out that the HLSL a uh, little bit different than the GLSL because they have a totally different, ah, not totally, but at least different coordinate. So they use the Z buffer to zero to one and OpenGL uses from minus one to one. So that's why we only see one rectangle because it was on the zero uh, value. And of course you will get two different uh, matrices because one of them is using row major and the other one is of course using column major. Why not? And uh, of course the UV mapping is also uh, different because in DirectX you have to do a flip on that but they are just is transformations so that wasn't that hard to fix and after we did that we got this so it's a servo with a DirectX 11 backend and yeah we only had to change some minor things to get there and uh, we even have WebGL with DirectX because the servo guys uh, helped us with that because they moved out the WebGL stuff from the web render to a separate crate. And now if uh, you can't create a shared context between two OpenGL contexts, like if you have a DirectX, you can uh, read back every uh, frame from the GL backend and send, us, send uh, the image data and we can render it. So. Yeah, uh, so a quick summary. The journey so far, we managed to change the whole rendering backend of WebRender. So we are now using GFX RS, and we managed to change servos, uh, managed to use servo with multiple platforms, OpenGL and DirectX, and we currently started investigating the who come part, so hopefully that will be the next thing. And thank you for your attention.